I'm going to show you how to take this horizontal gameplay, cut up the UI, and then assemble it into a professional vertical format that you can use for your TikTok streams and YouTube short streams. Vertical streaming has exploded over the past year. You all know that you could stream on TikTok, but did you know you could also stream directly to the YouTube shorts feed? I did a video about this last month, but you can stream in both horizontal and vertical formats on YouTube at the same time. And it's super worth doing because you get way more engagement from streaming in a vertical format. The problem is almost every single vertical stream looks horrible. And I get it. Trying to stream in vertical format, it's hard. Most games are designed for a horizontal layout. Almost every game has important UI elements that are off to the side, and then when you put it in vertical format, those get cut off. So to help you out, I'm going to show you how you could cut around those UI elements and freely position them wherever you want on your stream. And you're going to want to do this because everyone's TikTok stream right now looks awful. Nobody is doing this. You're going to be the only one that does this and everyone's going to look at your stream and be like, wow, this is amazing. I want to click into this guy's stream. Everything you'll see today is super easy and straightforward. You don't need to be a program hacker or anything like that. But if you did want to learn how to program, this week's sponsor, Brilliant, is a great place to start. Now, part of what I love about making YouTube videos is I love breaking down seemingly complex or complicated ideas and making them easy and approachable for you guys. So I love doing these Brilliant sponsorships because A, they share the same mission as me and B, B, I also used to be a programmer and they cover lots of topics from math, programming, data science, but they do it in a way that's really fun and engaging and digestible. Everything is super interactive, lots of little buttons and diagrams to help you visualize how programs work and not just a bunch of lines of code that you don't understand. In the past, I've recommended their thinking in code course and I'm gonna do it again because it is such a fun and easy way to learn the fundamentals like variables, if statements, while loops, all the things that you're going to use as a programmer every day. So if you want to try them out, I'll leave a link down below or just head to brilliant.org slash nutty. It's free for 30 days and you'll also get a 20% off discount on an annual subscription. So some prerequisites before we get started. Make sure you watch my previous video on vertical streaming because we talk about an OBS plugin called Atom Vertical and that video shows you how to get that set up and installed. And you will 100% be needing that plugin for everything I'm about to show you. For this video, all I wanted to do is focus focus on creating a professional looking vertical stream layout. And the first step to doing that is cutting out all of the UI elements for your game. The idea is we want each of those UI elements to be their own separate individual moving piece that you could freely position anywhere you want on your layout. And to do that, you need to create a mask. You can think of a mask like a cookie cutter and we're gonna use this cookie cutter to cut up our screen. And that cookie cutter takes the form of a PNG file which you're gonna make yourself. So to make a mask, you're gonna need an image editing tool like Adobe Illustrator or my personal favorite which is Affinity Designer. Both of those programs are paid and you guys are streamers. You don't have any money. So instead, we'll be using a free tool called SV Gator. I don't know if that's actually how you say it, but I chose SV Gator because it's free and it's browser based. So even Mac people can use it and Linux people for the one person in chat that uses that. So we're gonna do a quick example now. So just go to Google and search for SVG Ator and then click on the first result and just log in. You can log in with like a Google account. Then we're gonna create a new project and start with a file. Now, I already took a screenshot and we're gonna do uh, Apex for this example, uh, but just pick whatever game that you actually play. So looking at our screenshot, what are gonna be the things that our viewers care about the most? So probably the health bar in the bottom left, maybe the weapon that you're using in the bottom right, and uh, the kill stats in the top right. Now, ordinarily, that stuff would be cut off if you just did a normal vertical layout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the pen tool here, and we'll start with this, and we will just draw around the perimeter of the uh the health bar here and then connect it at the end there and now we have a blue line that surrounds the health bar now what we're gonna do is we're going to change the uh 
the fill and the stroke. So the stroke will be this square here. We're gonna set this to uh, to none. So just click on the blue square and click it, click none. And then for the fill, we're gonna make the whole polygon black. So click on the solid color here and yeah, just set it to black. It could really be any color, but we're just gonna use black for now. And that's basically the first part of your mask done. And then we just have to go and repeat the same process for everything else in the UI that we think is important. So we'll do the same thing for the weapon as well. And then finally, the same thing for the kill stats in the top right. And when you're done, you should have black areas covering up the parts that you want to see. Now we're going to go over to the canvas on the left and we're going to actually hide the image because we're going to go and uh, export this now. So click on export. Now, unfortunately, SV Gator can't actually export as a PNG file. So we're just going to export it as an SG S VG file. The background is going to show as a checkerboard pattern. That's just transparency. So um, if it isn't transparent for you, then make sure you change the canvas color to transparent and then export that and it will just download an SVG file. We don't actually want it in SVG format. We want it as PNG. So to change that into a PNG file, I'm just gonna look for an SVG to PNG converter. Uh, let's click on the first link, why not? And then uh, get our downloaded file and then just drag it in there. And that should automatically convert it to a PNG, download that, and then we can open it. And this is what it should look like. It's just an empty file, but it has black borders or black polygons over the things that we actually want to see. Now that we have our mask, we can start cutting up our layout in OBS. So this is probably what your layout looks like. Actually, we'll, we'll disable the horizontal stream for now. So your vertical stream probably looks like this. You probably just put your game in the bottom and then maybe you put your webcam at the top. Uh, we'll disable the webcam for now. And we're just going to stretch our gameplay to be full screen and then right click and center horizontally. So this is typical of what a normal YouTube vertical stream might look like. This is not ideal because your viewers are gonna miss out on what's on the left and what's on the right. So we're gonna add all of those UI elements back in by using our mask. So to do that, we're gonna use Source Clone. Now, if you don't know what Source Clone is, Source Clone is another OBS plugin we've talked about many times before, but basically it allows you to create clones of other sources so that you can apply filters to the clone without affecting the original source. So we're gonna right click and add a Source Clone. You don't need Source Clone, but I would highly recommend it if you don't if you refuse to use any OBS plugins whatsoever, then you could just create another game capture source and select your gameplay again. But honestly, I would highly recommend you get source clone. So we're going to use source clone and then we are going to clone our gameplay. Then we're going to apply our cookie cutter or our mask to that source clone. So we're going to go right click on the source clone filters, add a new filter. We're going to select image mask blend, set the type to alpha channel and then search for that PNG mask that we made. And you'll see immediately, it will cut out all of those UI elements and it won't show any of the gameplay, which is exactly what we want. And then from here, we're gonna turn each of these three things into individual pieces that we can move around independently. So if we hold down the Alt key and drag that clone, it crops in just to the pieces that we want. So we're just gonna do the health bar for now. And then if you wanna do the rest of them, we're just gonna right click and that same source clone that we created, we're gonna add that again. So don't create a new one, just add the exact same source clone and it's gonna add that source back in. And this time, again, hold the crop key or alt key and drag in. And this time we're gonna get our weapon and then now these are two independent UI elements and we can put them anywhere we want our, on our layout. And then finally, just do the same thing with the last thing. So right click, source clone. Don't add a new source clone again, okay? And then hold the Alt key, drag in and get that top right kill feed. And there you go, we've got three 
independent UI elements and we can just move that into the middle again and now our viewers can see them. One last thing you can do to make these pop out even more, if you've watched my other videos, I talked about another plugin that allows you to add drop shadows. So we're actually gonna add drop shadows to these UI elements to make it sort of 3D and pop out. So we're gonna go into the filters of any of those source clones and we're gonna add another filter. We're gonna add a drop shadow. Make sure to change the blur type to dual kawase and then change the shadows distance to zero and maybe increase the size of the shadows a bit. And you can see that adds a bit of a shadow to each of the UI elements. Expand that out a bit more and it makes it kind of look like it's it's popping out of our layout, which I think looks super professional and way better. So highly recommend doing that if you have those plugins. At this point, you can just start positioning the UI elements wherever you think they look good on the screen. But keep in mind that YouTube is cringe and they add a bunch of UI elements and buttons over your stream and the chat along the bottom, which could cover up some important information that you want to show to your viewers. And there's no way of knowing where those UI elements are going to be. So that's why I made a template that you guys can use and you can just overlay it on top of your scene. It's just this PNG file, which you can just drag over the top of your layout. And then we will center that to the screen and lock it down so it doesn't move. And then now you know exactly where those buttons are gonna be and where the, where the chat's gonna be along the bottom. So when you're positioning your UI, you don't put it all the way at the bottom and also not way at the top because that will be covered up by your username. Uh, you can just position it right below. So I'm going to put the health bar, maybe put it up here just below my name, and then we'll position the uh, kill stats right to the right of that. And then maybe we'll just put our weapon right there and then we'll shrink it down so it doesn't cover up our gameplay. Uh, so if you want this PNG file, I will make this available in a coffee link down below. It's gonna be completely free. You can just download that, add that to your layout, and then you can hide it once you're uh, fine with where everything is positioned. Um, yeah, it's free. I want money though. Um, so give me some. Of course, you can go ahead and start adding whatever else you think is missing. It might be a good idea to add your socials. So maybe if you multi-stream to Twitch, you should put a link to your Twitch stream there so people know to follow you. Just don't use the default text in OBS. That's cringe. You went through all this effort and then you're gonna use the default text in OBS. What's wrong with you? I got this free social media pop-up that you can get from Nerd or Die. Just add that and it looks way better. Now your masks are obviously gonna look different depending on what game you play. Here's another example I made for Mario Kart. Mario Kart is a good example because like Apex, all of the action happens in the center of the screen. So you can make yourself nice and big and you can position the item box, the placement, the lap number, the coins into the center of the frame. And your viewers won't really feel like they're missing anything. SV Gator is very robust by the way. That item box in the top left corner, that's just created using two black circles, which is very easy to do there. And if you want to do something fancy, like feather the edges of your masks to make them nice and soft and blend in with the background, that is also something you can do inside of SV Gator. In the end, you should have something that looks like this. Super professional, super clean, and nobody else is doing this. So this is a great opportunity for you guys to make sure you stand out from everyone else. If you guys utilize this tutorial, send me clips on Twitter. I would like to share some examples of what your layout could look like to everyone else because quite honestly, I'm so sick of seeing TikToks of people's streams that look terrible and they're not putting in any effort. So I'd like to see a future where everyone's streams looks as beautiful as they do on Twitch. If you guys found this video helpful, Good, because I worked really hard on it. And this is my third video in a row tonight. And it's 5.45 a.m. And I want to go eat some chips right now. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, go follow me on Twitch. And all of the other social media platforms. See ya. Bye.